What is gravity? What is negative differential pressure? The only way to figure it out is to understand that there are atoms and mass that you can't see or feel. It's called antimatter. And right now, industry and science community, they only believe in this. Only mass that I can see and feel and touch and measure with instrument. Right now, we cannot measure accurately, really, antimatter. We can't feel antimatter. Or can we? If you use a different equation, which is E equals plus or minus mass squared, this is the equation to understand gravity and start manipulating gravity. Because the universe looks like this in a nutshell. You have the electron, and then you have some kind of spring coefficient, which can, that's kind of like rubbery, something, that's joined to antimatter. What is antimatter? It's called a positron. And Paul Dirac got a Nobel Prize for it in 1943, roughly around there. He got a Nobel Prize for calculating that basically this, the square root of nine is three and negative three. But that's in the physics of matter, not just mathematical numbers, but for matter. And he calculated it and it's a Nobel Prize. So this is how you understand gravity. This is how you manipulate gravity. In every single reaction in the universe, if I take a hammer or something and I hit this, what's gonna happen to the electron? It's gonna move over here like that and its new position will be right here. Okay, that's assuming this equation. It just goes over there, okay? Yeah, but there's always something else that happens. That spring coefficient, what happened to that? It gets elongated. And then the antimatter has to try to catch up to what just happened up here. And so it takes a certain amount of time for it to readjust to find its new position of equilibrium because everything in the universe is trying to find equilibrium. And so then the spring coefficient retracts. So the expansion of whatever this spring is, which there's words for this, there's the quantum vacuum flux, the zero point energy or whatever you wanna call it. I just like to think of it as a spring because it's visually more easy. This springing, when it readjusts over like this, it has to release a photon into the universe. This photon can be changed from heat, if I hit it softly. It can be as soft as a radio frequency, which is long. It could be radio, okay? And this would be like heat. This is like heat, okay? Or I can hit the electron really hard, not hit the electron, but suck the electron, right? I can make it even, I can suck it in harder and it will release another type of photon, maybe an X-ray. This is a infrared and this is radio. You can even do it from microwave. But whatever is happening in the force input, if it be positive or negative, the spring coefficient of matter and antimatter has to readjust and emits a photon. So that's how you know you're accessing antimatter is when you receive the photons coming off. It's the universe readjusting itself, the byproduct. So that's how we know we're doing fusion 
plasma fusion is because when we do this, you know, either plus force or minus force, you know, suction or emitting, we get photons. We can do this gravity flux continuously. Gravity has to do with pulling the positron away, of pulling it away from the readjustment, renormalization. And if you can hold it away for as long as you want, it'll just keep emitting photons continuously. If it readjusts, oh, it's one photon. Wow, good job. No, but if we hold it back and keep pushing this this way or pulling it that way and hold this back somehow, did we not talk about that earlier? We talked about basically the ground state, the cathode, being in resonance and the positive side of the circuit pulling and tugging the electrons. So this antimatter, which is positively charged, gets pulled in to the negative cathode and holds it there. And then the positive pulsing causes the electron to be sucked in. And of course, there has to be photons that are emitted. That is gravity. It's a higher dimensional flux. The flux capacitor from Back to the Future. And Iron Man's arc reactor. Same tech. It's here now. It's real. It's not fake. Truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah. Back to the beginning there. So that's gravity. Does that make sense? No. But, so gravity is electric? I completely missed the point. Positrons. You got confused by positrons. That's what it was. What is a positron? It's a conjugate charge mass that is the opposite charge of electron. So electrons are negative, positrons are positive. And so when you find the resonance in the circuit, then the positrons flux over here and hold. And they're like, okay, I kind of want to be right here. And this weird force is holding me back. And then the electrons are like, oh no, oh no, it's a gravity field, I know this. And they get sucked in. And then there's a renormalization through the spring coefficient of matter and antimatter, which is always there. And you look up into space and you see with a telescope into the darkness of space and there's nothing there, right? No, you actually see tons of photons that you can't see with your eyes. It's called the microwave background radiation. No one knows really where that comes from. I do. It's the spring coefficient of the ether, or essentially this, this breath of God, if you want to be you know, biblical. It's the breath of God. It's basically this flux that's trying to pop electrons into existence. But once you pop an electron into existence, you have to pop a positron into existence. But sometimes the swirling breath of God messes up and it goes boop and it annihilates itself and it makes a photon. And then there's a swirling and then, oh, electron pops and oh, it does, oh, and now it's stable. Oh, baby, we're stable, right? It's like two people dancing. Okay, we're, we're dancing now. And then another electron pops and then it comes close and then it turns into a proton. And that's a whole nother thing too. Are you recording this? <laughs> yeah, so there you go. There's, that's what gravity is. And the reason we don't understand gravity is because we don't equate in our synthetic devices antimatter. Antimatter has a charge. It's positive charge. Antimatter is positively charged. So when you turn on this device, it's sucking, it's, a, it's an antimatter reactor essentially. It's, a, it's tickling the antimatter. It, that's what it's doing at one quarter impulse power. 